Hey guys, so this one really surprised me as far as like people wanting to see different strategies for this. Uh, this is how to draw a checkerboard. Um, we're gonna talk about five real strategies uh, that you can manually draw these things with STD draw. Um, we've talked about there's more than 10. Uh, easily you double this just by incorporating loops, but these can be drawn meticulously one at a time if you want. Um, the longest one you're ever going to do is just if you have to draw all 64 of these by hand. Oh, draw this one, change the color, draw this one, change the color, and so forth. And there's different combinations you can do to keep it light. You could draw all the red squares first. You could do all the black squares first and swap either way. Um, but that's the longest way you're ever going to code it, and we will look at that. Um, another one would be just to draw half of them. Okay, so rather than drawing 64 squares, what if I only had to draw 33? I draw one big black circle square, and then I can draw all the red on top of it. That way, everything is see-through, and I don't have to, I basically cut my work in half. Okay, uh, another one is to just divvy up your workload. Cut it into different pieces and use loops to repeat them. It could be as simple as to complete the two lines and then you repeat it four times. It could compete it as draw just these four and repeat that over and over and over 16 times. There's lots of ways we can do these things, um, but we're going to look at five today and I hope this helps you. Uh, I will mix up the colors just to keep them consistent and so you can see which parts are which, but we're going to look at five different ways on how to draw a checkerboard. All right, guys, rather than showing you all the ins and outs of coding each of these individuals, I'm just going to show you the similarities between a lot of them. Try to keep this video to a reasonable length. Um, this is the first way, how to draw each square individually. So this is going to draw all 64 squares, one right after the other, alternating between, uh, I think this one is black and red, back and forth. Yeah, it is. Um, so here's where I landed up. First thing I've got to do is I need to create shift values that I can move between the center of the squares. Remember with HTD draw, all of these shapes we draw define a center point and then draw around it. So we need to be able to shift that center point along the uh, X and the Y as we create the rows and columns. Uh, for my if tests, I did nest, it's not if tests, excuse me, for my for loops, I did nest them, but rather than keep track of the position, which I'll do on my own, I just kept track of how many squares I was drawing. So both of these values only go from uh, zero to eight or zero to seven in this case. Inside the loop, I added an if test to alternate between uh, red and black, okay? Now, if, it, if they are both even, then I'm red. If anything else happens, then they flip back to uh, black. And so that little trick uh, keeps us from having to have multiple if tests, but it does alternate our colors appropriately. Hey guys, uh, this is Mr. Gerald from the future editing this. Uh, I made a comment that needs to be clarified right here. So this test right here, even though we use this multiple times, this is not just checking to see if they are even. That is what we got. Uh, what we've used this code for in the past, but if you look at it, there is no double equals zero. So this is just checking to see if we're modding by two that they have the same value. So for even, they're both even. For odds, they're both odds. That's how we get that diagonal checkered pattern that we're looking for. Down here, I've got my filled squares. So 40 is my starting position since there are 80 across. And then I have my vertical shift times my integers up here. This tells me what square I'm at and so forth. I do the same trick right here for my y values, which again is at 40 since you know that's the center of the first square. And then I draw the apothem or the polygon radius right there. And so this one draws each individual square just like that. And so the computer's running a little slow, but you can actually see it build each of those shapes starting from the bottom building up, okay? So there's plenty of overlap there. And that's the shortest way to draw the individual squares. 
All right, this next one is the one we mentioned in the intro. It's drawing one large square and then drawing uh, half of the uh, remaining squares on top of it. In this case, I've got a big gray square and I'm going to layer uh, some blue on top of it. Uh, most of this is almost identical to what we just did. Uh, I tried to keep them, the code as short as possible to help you guys out. Uh, I did still have to create my vertical and horizontal shift values. Um, the difference is up here, I draw, drew one square up top. And so the code here is almost identical to what we just drew drawing the individual squares because that's what's actually happening. The only trick to this is I only have to draw half of them. So when it's not drawing the blue square, it just skips over that line. And that's what allows this to be. Remember, this is the same test we used in the other code of when we changed color. So rather than uh, drawing each one, it just skips it. Okay. But it still gives us the same result. Okay. And as you can tell from the animation, the gray was drawn first and then the blue was overlaying on top of it. Okay. Hey guys, pardon the wardrobe change. Uh, obviously with the ice storm, I only got part of it recorded last week before we got dismissed and I didn't get a chance to finish it. So I'm here to pick up where we left off. So this is the third uh, way to draw the checkerboard. And in this reality, we're or in this version, we're drawing each line and specifically I'm doing two lines at a time. And that's just one solid row alternating the different colors back and forth. Now I use the same trick we used in the second board to draw a big square first. So that way that's done. I don't have to do anything else like it. Um, and then I come back in here and then I draw my alternating squares. So it's going to draw two rows at a time, jumping back and forth between the two squares. And that's why you get these little shift values in at different places. Okay. Okay. So as you saw, the purple was drawn first. Oh, need to take out the clear. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Sorry, I've got this set up to where it'll draw all of them eventually. So you'll see that at the end of the video. Um, so yeah, it'll draw the big purple square and then it'll draw the yellow on top of it. And again, that's another trick we used from the second uh, board to half our code, okay? We simplified it, we draw one big and then overlap it with the other. For board number four, we're doing basically the same kind of thing, except instead of drawing the rows, I'm just drawing one two by two square at a time. So I'm blocking off since those are the two patterns we could have, you know, one color than the second or the second color than the first, just that two by two square. And then I'm replicating it as many times as we need to. And so that's what we've got here. Again, I'm making a big square first, but then I'm only drawing, as you see down here, two squares at a time, then I'm shifting it over. And it gets pretty much the same effect. I mean, it's a checkerboard. All of these are gonna be pretty much identical. This one goes orange and then green. And, you know, that's what's going on. Now, we haven't talked about it in class, but it is in your drawing uh, library that I gave you. There's this pause. And what it is, is it's how many milliseconds to pause. So this is, uh, I think that's going to be 2.5 seconds, give or take. Um, but, yeah, if you want to use that, that's a great way of doing of pausing on an image. And then I've got the clear command underneath, which wipes the slate clean so it will draw the second one. And after our fifth and final board, you'll see that completely in action. Okay, the fifth and final board is the big one. It's a dynamic board, which means I can let the user dictate and tell me how many squares they want on each side. Now, because of the nature of this code, it is a square. They do have to be the same on both sides. It is alternating the pattern, but that's just what a checkerboard is. If I wanted to make it not the same, I could tweak some values, but this is just keeping it as simple as possible. Remember that the four ways we've done are not the only way to solve this problem. There are several others. Um, 
I tried to use the ones that were the least amount of work. So the ones that had loops involved. If you were one of those people, and I know you're out there, that coded every individual square, good job, good effort, okay? You did a lot more work than I did. But this is gonna borrow bits and pieces from both of these sets above. I think this is probably, I think where I ended up is probably as close to board two as possible. And then I made it dynamic with user input. So I did have to go back and input a scanner. That's why you see this this time. And then I just set some basic values. We talked about the apothem being the distance between the center of the square and the flat side. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I'm rounding down automatically with half of the width divided by the input. So I'm letting them tell me how many squares they want. Remember, I've got a board that's 700 pixels, I think. Then I'm halving it because, remember, we're alternating the colors. And then I'm rounding down, forcing it to go down so that makes sure it fits on the board instead of going over. And then because floor returns a double, I'm having to cast it as an integer just to keep everything nice and pretty in my code. Okay. The board itself is the number of apothems times the input. Okay. And then here's where I get started. First thing I do is I make the big board. Okay. That's my big outer coloring so that I don't have to come back and do anything else. Then I set my new horizontal and vertical shifts. Those are going to be twice the apothems since that's center point to center point. And then I set my second color. Then using a nested loop, an if test, and one line of code, I draw all the other colors in. Okay, so let's take one look at it. Okay, now unlike the others, this is waiting on use input. Now I put one to 100. It gets a little crazy if you go above that, but let's go like 20. I go back over here. And if I count those off, that's 20 by 20. Okay, I run it again. Let's go up to 100. This is going to look like pixels almost. <clears throat> Processing so many per side, we can actually see it coding it with all their calculations faster than we can calculate by, by far, but still going to take just a little bit. And as you can tell, this is getting a little crazy. So if we went much higher than 100, it would be even longer. So 100 is probably a good way to stop this. But I could also go the other direction. I could go smaller. I can make a tic-tac-toe board. Give me just a second, and that finishes. Okay. If I went something as small as, say, three. There you go. All right. Colors can be whatever they wanted to, um, all manner of things. But let's throw the whole thing together, and we'll show you all five versions at once, just as one kind of showcase, like, bam, here you go. All right, guys, moment of truth. Okay, there's our first one, builds the individual boxes. There's the one with the overlap. That one builds rows at a time. This one, the two by two squares at a time. And now I'm ready for an input. Let's just go 12. There you go. Go back and look at the individual boards if you want to get the codes for them. Uh, feel free to use these as you see fit. Uh, hope this explains it and welcome back.